Uh, how do you feel about uh, the current uh, BJJ practitioners in MMA? S we tend to see BJJ uh, waning a little bit in MMA. Then we tend to see a resurgence of BJJ uh, with people and, and like Damian Maya. And, and, so what, what do you what do you think? Well, of B first of all, I think that first off, the rules are against grappling. I think that's very easy to show. The fans are against grappling. They much rather see you know a bar fight than a technical grappling match. And I get that they want to entertain. If you're a fan, you entertain. Me. I'm not a fan. I'm a fighter. I want to see a technical match. So to me, the, all the ground is beautiful. But I understand why the UFC, for example, does what it does. They have a bias towards standing. That's very obvious. Um, you know, in a number of situations, where I can I can make a, I can make a case for a long time of how MMA rules are biased towards striking. That's that's the first problem. But uh, as far as the resurgence goes, like jujitsu has become a life. They took in a life of its own. When I started training, if you bought a jujitsu magazine, it was an MMA magazine. It was a Valetudo magazine as well. It was the same thing. There was no, there was no separation, you know, uh, between the two. And now, you know, my, my BJJ students don't watch MMA at all. My MMA students don't watch BJJ at all. They're different sports completely. And they've really drifted away from, from one another. Um, I think I was having this conversation with Ricardo Liborio about a year ago. And we were talking how about, like, Damian Maya might be the last efficient representative of jiu-jitsu MMA. Period. It might be the last, the last of the Mohicans, the, the real last of the Mohicans, because... Uh, Jiu-Jitsu practitioners today have developed a style that, you know, is very, that will not translate well into MMA, in my opinion, unless they spend a lot of time making that transition, which is possible. And additionally, they're being very successful in Jiu-Jitsu. If you get the elite Jiu-Jitsu practitioners today, they make really good money. Uh, I, I, may, I, I make the case that the average Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt makes more money than the average MMA fighter. You got to remember, most MMA fighters are not making Conor McGregor money. They're making nothing, right? They're paying to fight. So the average jiu-jitsu black belt opens a gym and he's making a salary. So jiu-jitsu has become so successful around the world, there's less of an incentive for people to make that transition to MMA if money is a, in, uh, um, a motivation. For some people it is. For a lot of people it is. You know, I would like to see more representatives in, of jiu-jitsu MMA. I would like to see more grappling in MMA, to be frank. But it will never go away. I think that the case that a lot of critics of BJ, BJJ make in MMA is really unfounded, you know. Um, when I hear people like BJJ is dead in me, I'm like, you're not watching UFC. Every UFC, I see a submission. Even if it's not from a BJJ practitioner, that's not a point. The point is someone did a Kimura, a guillotine, or a naked choke successful, successfully. So it's, I see grappling very much a part of MMA still. Uh, albeit, it's, the rules are very much against it. When you pay attention, you see how the rules are geared. I've, I've had a UFC judge tell me that a, near, a good takedown is worth more points than a near submission. And the way the judges are scoring the fight. So you get a takedown that is worth more points than someone who almost got a choke that without a judge there could have killed you. The guy has the option of kill. So submission is a serious thing. A choke is a serious thing. But the UFC does not view it that way because they will view, I mean, they're always going to view a near knockout as being far worth, worth far more points than a near submission. Now, from a technical perspective, if you look at that, it's the exact same thing. You almost finished the fight. Whether one is more impressive than the other, that's not to the point. UFC is not about... You know, fighting is not about what's impressive, about what is efficient. They both almost finished the fight. But the judges do not look at those two at the same things. In fact, like I said, they, meant they, they, they will give more points for a, near, for a good takedown than they will for a near submission, which to me is crazy. It's logical for me to give more points to uh, a near knockout because a near knockout creates damage, but uh, a near uh, a takedown does not, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, take, I mean, it might, you know, but I mean, a near submission might create damage too, you know. A, uh, it might, yeah. But it's, it's, I think that, you know, when something that almost finishes the fight, it happened, if I'm the judge, I'm taking that into consideration. He was very close to finishing the fight. You know, it was one step away, but they don't count that much. So there are a number of problems with uh, the, the way the judges score fights in MMA. And I mean, pride was a better system. It's not, it's not, it's not to me, it's not a coincidence. Grapplers did better in pride than they do in the UFC because, you know, everything from the ring to the way the rounds were to penalizing, stalling, and pride that happened in, in, in pride doesn't happen in the UFC. Did they do better? Because uh, in pride we had a resurgence of, uh, we had the, the, re uh, the return of the striker with the Shooter Box Academy. Um, I, I don't know, man. Like, look, I saw, I, can't, I, th I thought a lot of uh, Jiu Jitsu guys, when they fought in the ring, did better. One, it's mm -hmm. easier to close the distance. If you end up on bottom, the rope doesn't hold your head. You don't get your head stuck on the, on the fence. Uh, so it's much easier to clinch. The longer rounds favor the grappler, too. Uh, my favorite thing about pride rules was that if I'm on top and you're stalling, you get a yellow card and I get a percentage of your purse. Remember, in the UFC, it's the opposite. They reward the staller. 
So if I hold, if you hold me down, the radio of the people, the referee will stop the fight and stand you back up. In other words, the person who is stalling is being rewarded for stalling, which is a strange rationale to me. You should be rewarding the guy who's trying to fight, right? Uh, but things like that. But you know, some people disagree. And at the end of the day, UFC a long time ago ceased from being about. It's not about fighting anymore. It's about entertainment and making money. And I, once they've gone that route, I, it became less interesting to me. I, I'm more of a purist, I guess. Like, I liked the UFC the way it was before it became mainstream. It was really about you earned your title fight. Now it's not about you earning your title fight or not. It's more about can you sell tickets. And if you don't, I don't care how good you are, you're in the back burner. You know, and I just look at that and I go, this is show business. It's becoming more and more like WWE. And um, I, to me, that's less interesting.